Hello and welcome to Nagaland TV. You are watching NLTV News now. I'll read the headlines. Chief Minister Nafu Rio flies to Delhi, slated to meet Union Home Minister Amit Shah and other BJP leaders over the issue of formation of all party and opposition less government. Rising People's Party files PIL seeking revocation notification by personnel and administrative reforms department that empowers 76 departments to conduct departmental examination. 12 people including 8 cadres of different factions of the National Socialist Council of Nagaland apprehended by security forces in Dimapur. Dimapur Chamber of Commerce and Industry expressed grave concern over the illegal taxation. See government's immediate intervention. LPG prices once again witness hike as petroleum companies increase the price of domestic LPG gas cylinders by Rs 25, while price of commercial gas cylinders rise by 75. And now, the news in details. Chief Minister Ney Furio once again left for Delhi on Tuesday to meet Union Home Minister Amit Shah and other BJP leaders. Today, as further consultations were in process with BJP over the issue of formation of all party and opposition-less government, Rio informed that all political party in the state were still on board over the NUG and said it is he is confident that the state government will not back out from the formation of all party state government. State BJP President Temjen Imna Long and BJP Legislator Leader Y Paton are currently in Delhi waiting upon the centre's nod for the opposition-less government. Twelve people, including eight cadres of different factions of the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, have been apprehended by security forces and the police in two separate incidents in Dimapur district. Reportedly in the first incident on Sunday in Kukridolong area in Dimapur district, the security forces nabbed four persons and one NSC and IM cadre and seized Myanmar's products. In another incident, seven NSCN are cadres who were using an illegal mess and barrack as a base for illegal activities were apprehended in Shakir area in Dimapur. However, the apprehended cadres were then released at Dipupar police station after due warning from violating ceasefire ground rules. Furthermore, both the factions of the NSCN have signed ceasefire agreements with the centre. The Rising People's Party filed a public interest litigation on Tuesday in the High Court. Kohima bench, after its demand to the state government to withhold the recruitment of 1,517 posts under 76 departments, went unheard. The RPP informed that it has no other options but to file a PIL against the DPAR notification and the functioning of NSSB, alleging that the government notification is solely aimed at justifying rampant backdoor appointments. RPP said that the PIL was filed on Tuesday by Likriko Krio, Secretary of the Party and through other Struneti Koza, Advocate and Counselor for the Petitioners. Furthermore, the Rising People's Party demands that the said vacant number of posts must be advertised and filed, filled only through the NPSC and NSSB recruitment exams in order to facilitate the practice of fair and just recruitment process. Highlighting the focus of the state government on self-reliance, reskilling and employment avenues and generation on the wake of COVID pandemic, Deputy Chief Minister Y. Paton urged the government at the centre to help the state to get projects sanctioned early. Paton said this during a virtual conference along with Chief Secretary J. Alam at Nagaland House in New Delhi, organised by donor in regard to issues relating to agri and allied sectors, with all the Chief Ministers of Northeastern states in attendance on Tuesday. Nagaland Chief Minister Nefu Rio could not attend the meeting due to prior engagements.
Nagaland has reported the highest score of 0.61 COVID-19 surveillance in India. Researchers at Stanford University conducted a study for quality of COVID-19 and according to data reporting, Nagaland was best in the country. The researchers to Health and Family Welfare Department stated in an email that the recent findings show the quality of surveillance data reporting Nagaland is the best in the country. Nagaland also scores highest in metric because of high quality granular data report through weekly bulletins. PhD scholars Abhinya Gyaneshkar and Varun Vasudhavan, who were a part of the team led by Professor James Jo from Stanford University, said that Health and Family Welfare Department's weekly bulletin empowered people to get proactive about their health. Fit India movement promoted by Assam Rifles in Nagaland by Kohima Battalion of Assam Rifles. On 31st August, Assam Rifles organized a football match to promote the Fit India movement. The Kohima Battalion of Assam Rifles organized a match between the locals of Bayavu Hill of Kohima and troops of Assam Rifles at the Indira Gandhi Stadium, Kohima, Nagaland. Indian Chamber of International Business Members had a meeting with Nagaland State to enhance export and to get new technologies to do manufacturing in Nagaland. The meeting was led by Manpreet Singh, the President, East Zone Vice President M. Chuba Ao and Central Zone Vice President Rajan Thaukar. The meeting was coordinated by State Convener Mr. Buma Chang. Dimapur Chamber of Commerce and Industry expressed their grave concern on Tuesday over the illegal taxation by various groups, which they have said has risen high after the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic. DCCI has sought government's immediate intervention to the act upon the menace of illegal taxation and also warned that the failure of the part of government to address the plight of the business community would compel the business community of Dimapur to take extreme measures, including closure of all, all shops and business houses. Reportedly, multiple illegal taxations imposed by various groups in multiple times, starting at train wagons to go downs and extend still showrooms of respective shops. Dimasa Student Union Nagaland, in collaboration with Dimasa Youth Organization Nagaland, organized a felicitation program to honor the praiseworthy students on Sunday at Shalom Mission High School. Co Hall in Doyapur village and the theme education and society. Reportedly, it was organized to felicitate successful candidates of HSLC, HSSLC, graduates, postgraduates and other professional courses. Furthermore, Assistant Professor of Fake Government College, Ronald DeFeso Divasa and the Assistant Employment Officer from DIFU, Julie Heger, were the resource persons in the program. Social Welfare Department bid farewell to its first female director, Kiatoli Sema, on 31st August at the Conference Hall of Capital Convention Center, Kohima. In a press release, the department informed that during the farewell program, various speakers spoke on the good attributes of the outgoing director and congratulated her on completion of a successful career. Speaking at the program, outgoing director K. Atoli Sema encouraged district officers to see their work as an opportunity and work with sincerity and dedication. She reminded them that the duties assigned to them were nothing short of missionary work and advised them to dedicate themselves to the service. With the un unveiling of Nagaland SDG's Vision 2030 by Chief Minister Nephew Rio, he stated that no one will be left behind and plans to provide short, medium and long-term strategies to achieve 17 sustainable development goals in which quality education would be one.
The current literacy rate of northeastern state is 79.55% and Nagaland government has made an ambitious plan of attaining 100% literacy rate by 2030 through strengthening Angarwadi centers and early childhood besides improving infrastructure in accordance to a vision document of the state administration. The objective of the state is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all and eliminate gender and other disparities at all levels of education. Abhisikta Chakravarti from Dimapur of Class 7 from Holy Cross Higher Secondary School has won the Regional Winners Trophy of the Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage on Tuesday. The nationwide painting and essay competition was held in April 2021 on the theme Nature in Danger. Reportedly, Intak Nagaland chapter informed that Abhishekta's entry, titled Promoting a Traditional Green Practice, was judged as one of the regional winners from over 5,000 nationwide entries. Furthermore, Intak Nagaland chapter, state convener Santilati Yangar and co-convener Mefutiba presented the trophy to principal of the school, Father Philip. Various Rotary International Clubs came together to donate three sets of oxygen concentrators to the Department of Health and Family Welfare, Nagaland, as a part of COVID response project on August 26 at the Chief Minister's Office, Kohima. To embrace the RI motto, Service Above Self, and to fulfill the year's theme, Service to Change Lives. The president of Rotary Club, Kohima, urged the citizens to serve the community, especially in times of pandemic like COVID. Savi added that the club would be donating few oxygen concentrators to remote areas of community health centers in fact district and some more oxygen concentrators are in the pipeline and that the club would be donating vending machines to one of the government schools in Kohima town. Petroleum companies have increased price of domestic LPG gas cylinders by Rs 25. With this, the price of a non-subsidized 14.2 kg cylinder in Delhi now costs Rs 884.50, while price of 19 kg commercial cylinder rise by Rs 75 and will now cost Rs 1693. The new rates have come across to effect from today. India reports 41,965 fresh COVID-19 cases with 460 deaths in the last 24 hours. India's recovery rate now stands at 97.751, a total of 33,964 patients recovered in the last 24 hours, which brings the total recoveries to 3 crore 19 lakh 93,644 across the country in the last 24 hours. With 3,78,181 active cases. Meanwhile, Nagaland records a total of 30,082 COVID 19 cases, with 80 new cases on Tuesday, while total death rose to 617. We'd like to tell our viewers again, giving the COVID updates of the country, India reports 41,965 COVID-19 cases with 460 deaths in the last 24 hours. India's recovery rate now stands at 97.51%, a total of 33,964 patients recovered in the last 24 hours, which brings the total recoveries to 3 crore 19 lakh 93,644 across the country in the last 24 hours. With that, 3,78,181 active cases in the country. Meanwhile, Nagaland recorded a total of 30,082 COVID cases with 80 new cases on Tuesday, while total death rose to 617.
42 students have tested positive for COVID-19 in a college in Karnataka's Kolar KGF College of Dental Sciences and Hospital. Karnataka Health Minister K. Sudhakar informed that the 32 students are all returnees from Kerala. He further said that he will visit the college and take strict action against the college leadership. Furthermore, he said that the COVID-19 has been brought under control to 800 cases per day from as high as 50,000 cases per day. While adding that the government has worked hard to mitigate the pandemic. All adults in Indore have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine, Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said on Tuesday. Calling it a miracle in a series of tweets that makes Indore the first district in the country with a population of more than 10 lakh to give the first dose to 100 percent it does. The Chief Minister said that he had appealed to the people of Indore to get their first dose of vaccination by August 31 and that they had been achieved. He also thanked PM Modi for his blessings, which is why he said that the state could get enough vaccines and Indore was able to achieve the goal. He also stated that under the guidance of Prime Minister, the entire state of Madhya Pradesh will be able to achieve 100 percent vaccination. मैं इंदौर वासियों को, इंदौर के आदरणीय जन प्रतिधियों को, इंदौर के प्रशासन को, क्राइसिस मैनेजमेंट कमेटी को और विभिन्न स्वयंसेवी समाजसेवी संस्थाओं को बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूं कि जिनके सक्रिय सहयोग के कारण इंदौर में 70 प्रतिशत, 100 प्रतिशत वैक्सीन का पहला डोज लग चुका है। अभी पिछले दोनों इंदौर पहला डोज हमारा कंप्लीट हो जाए सबको लग जाए कोई बिना टीके के ना बचे इंदौर ने ये चमत्कार कर दिखाया है सुरक्षा का डोज जिंदगी का डोज इंदौर वासियों ने लगवाया है सत सत बधाई बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद The Bharatiya Janata Party is holding Sraddhanjali Sabhas or memorial meetings across 1918 places in Uttar Pradesh in honor of former UP Chief Minister and Hindutva icon Kalyan Singh. And the biggest of these events in Lucknow is being attended by a galaxy of top BJP leaders on Tuesday afternoon. A buzz gained around that the BJP chief visited Mulayam to invite him for Lucknow Sraddhanjali Sabha to be also attended by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and Deputy Deputy Chief Minister Keshav Prasad Maurya and Dinesh Sharma and Rashtra Swamsavak Sang Veterans. The meeting comes in the backdrop of the BJP's heavy criticism of Mulayam's son, NSP Chief Akhilesh Yadav, for not paying last respects to Kalyan Singh in person. The BJP, however, rejected speculation that the meeting with Mulayam Singh was to invite him to the memorial meet. Chief Minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, breaks his silence over the repetitive Prime Minister material comments. Bihar CM Nitish Kumar on Tuesday clarified that they were talks and they were just mere talks and that there was no such basis for such remarks. Furthermore, Nitish Kumar added that whatever was discussed in the Janata Dal United meetings and the statement made by the party leaders thereafter should not be termed as JDU official comment. Earlier, a JDU meeting was held where General Secretary of the party K.C. Tyagi had said the JDU is the most trusted member of the National Democratic Alliance and Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the leader of the alliance. But Nitish Kumar is certainly PM material. The statement did not go down well with the member of the Bharatiya Janata Party who underlined that the one needed who needed support of the 272 MPs to become the PM and that the JDU was unlikely to win as many seats on its own. Giving you the Paralympic updates of the Indian contingent, Indian duo of Maria Panthangavelu and Sharad Kumar took India's overall medal tally to 10 on Tuesday. Maria Pan won the silver medal while Sharad secured bronze in men's high jump final event. Yesterday, India's Shringraj Adhana had clenched bronze medal in P1 men's 10-meter air 
Pistol SH1 event. However, Manish Narwal only managed a 7th spot. In signs that the government of India has softened its stance on the Taliban, the Ministry of External Affairs announced that its ambassador to Qatar, Deepak Mittal, met with the head of Taliban's political office, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanik Zai, on Tuesday. While Indian security officials and diplomats are understood to have engaged with Taliban representatives for several months, this is the first time the government has publicly acknowledged such a meeting, which the MEA said came with the request of the Taliban. U.S. President Joe Biden informed that the United States will continue to support the Afghan people through diplomacy, international influence and humanitarian aid on Tuesday. Biden further said that the end of the war in Afghanistan marks the era of major military operation to remake other countries. Even if U.S. continues to support Afghan people, she will not no longer provide any military support. Biden stated that he refused to send another generation of American sons and daughters to fight a war that should have ended long ago. He further added, I refuse to open another decade of warfare in Afghanistan. In yet another setback in the decade-long scientific quest for an HIV vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson HIV vaccine candidate failed in a clinical trying among women in Southern Africa. The advanced HIV vaccine trial has been shut down after data showed that the shots offered only limited protection against the virus. The trials called Imbokoro was co-sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the U.S. National Institute of Health. It included more than 2,600 women living in five African countries. The would-be vaccines uses the same underlying technology used successfully for COVID-19 and Ebola viruses. Sri Lanka declared a state of economic emergency over rising inflation in the country. President has asked the authorities to seize stocks of food items like sugar and rice and regulate the prices to control the inflation. One of the primary reasons for the inflation is crisis in foreign exchange. President Gotabaya Raja Paksha said he had ordered emergency regulation to counter the hoarding of sugar, rice and other essential foods. The emergency came into effect from the midnight. Reportedly, the government has appointed a formed army, former army general as commissioner of essential services who will have the power to seize food stocks held by traders and retaliators and regulate their prices. Sri Lanka's inflation rose from 7.5.7% in July to 6% in August. That is all for now. This is Gargi Deka signing off. Keep watching Nagaland TV for more news and updates.